Welcome back to the Sports Mac Zone. We now have a proper explanation for Mariah's absence on this show. She's currently gearing up for the TNT leg of the Republic Bank Caribbean Premier League. She earlier visited the Cricket Museum at uh, the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain and filed this report. Cricket Museum at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain and I'm so excited to find out about all the different artifacts that are present here. You know, I love cricket so much and I think it's perfect that I have you with me, the president of the Queen's Park Cricket Club, Nigel Camacho. So talk to me about what is stored in this room. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited about this. Uh, we, we have a treasure trove of assets collected related to cricket and other sporting activities. A lot of the history of the country, of the region, mirror the actual history of the development of cricket in the Caribbean. So what happens is inside of this museum, we have many assets that tell stories. Yeah, and even so perfect, it's CPL season, so a lot of cricketers in the country right now, and you know, the entire Trinidad and Tobago very, very excited for that first match sure. that will begin. Trinidadians and West Indians and in general, you know, they love their CPL. You know, they love their T20 cricket. They love the action, the activity. And we're going to see an incredible atmosphere tomorrow night at the Queen's Park Oval. So Khalil, you're the manager here at the museum. Tell me a bit about your role and what you're responsible for doing. Yeah, so my role is obviously to have the artifacts in order, always update them and whatnot. And as certain events occur, to have the artifacts tweak for the most impact. But most importantly, um, it's also to have the education aspect done for both um, the younger generation, historians, and also people who may want to visit Trinidad and have an appreciation for West Indies cricket. So at the moment, um, we are open for tours to school children, as well as anyone who is, wants to come and um, witness the piece of history we have here. Yeah, and I think there's so much in this museum. What stands out for you the most? Because I was excited by the brand Narabats. Liverpool was founded in 1892. The Queen's Park um, Cricket Club, which was then known as the Sovereign Cricket Club, was founded in 1891. So we have artifacts that go beyond just sport, but also can teach us about our history as a people. You can actually see your appreciation for both different generations where you're looking at the Lara days, which are the more recent times, mm -hmm. and I would be looking at the um, very historic days, which would have been the, the time when the groundwork would have been placed for West Indies cricket. Yeah, and you know, we had a conversation before we started sure. this interview about the massive turnout that happens for the sure. Caribbean Premier League. But when we have test matches and regular West Indies matches, we don't see that same yeah. turnout. I, and you know, Mariah, over, over the years, our, our free time, how we spend our free time has evolved. The ability to focus on things for long periods of time when it comes to test cricket is not there. You know, and this was, this was a pastime for me growing up with all my friends and colleagues from school. We would come to watch test cricket. Right, so maybe your role as president with this museum can help remind the youngsters. I, yeah, I th I, yeah, thanks, Mara. I think it's a huge opportunity, right, to, to re-educate that lost generation, I call them. There's a lost generation of young, young West Indians that have disconnected with West Indies cricket. And we are hoping to utilize the assets inside of the museum to try and reconnect them and give them a little exciting education about what cricket really means to us as people in the West Indies, because it's huge, you know. And we'll, we'll util, utilize the platform, the CPL, and the popularity of, and the amount of people that come out to see the CPL to try and help bridge that gap, you know. Yeah. I think that's a really, really good idea. But you, we keep talking about the CPL, and I have to put you on the spot. You'll tell me who you're supporting for the men's competition as well as the women's competition. I am, I am dreadfully biased. You know, I, I am, I am, I am a TKR to the, to the soul. Yeah. You know, and I, I am going to be back in TKR. But the TKR team, I tell you, Mariah, and, and I, we make men and women make no bones about it. Men and women, but the men's team has no less than 13 or 14 members of our club, Queen's Park Cricket Club. This museum has been recognized for the good work. You've been awarded the Chaconia yeah. um, Medal, yeah. Yeah, which is one of the highest award here in Trinidad yeah. and Tobago. So for sure, you're on the right path. Correct. And um, as you mentioned, that I have to give credit to the original creator of the museum, uh, Mr. Stephen Almondos. Plenty of what you mentioned there with getting the Chaconia Gold Medal, even um, the recognition from the Ministry of Tourism and whatnot. 
would have been um, because of the hard work he did in the early days. Based on that groundwork, I think it, was, it is our duty at Queen's Park Cricket Club now to build on that so that the younger generation who may not have an understanding for it could really appreciate the history of West Indies cricket. Essentially, um, Queen's Park Cricket Club is taking on a plan right now where we are expanding our accessibility to worldwide via a digital museum. So what is going to happen is all the artifacts and archives will be digitized, digitized sorry, together with narratives done from historians. So persons from all over the world can get a taste of our history here. Apart from just it being a natural view and it will have other value added aspects of it where it may have interactive games based on those historical occurrences. That is where the, we are going with the future of Queen's Park Cricket Club. Now, not only for the accessibility, but also what appeals to this generation. Well, Khalil, thank you so much. I had a great time at the museum today, and I'm encouraging you to come and check it out. Of course, tell your teachers, let your school know. I think it's a good opportunity for you to learn so much about the cricket history here in Trinidad and Tobago, and of course, the West Indies. Bye for now. Yeah, thanks, Mariah. And of course, Queen's Park Cricket Club, the most high-profile cricket club in Trinidad and Tobago. And um, the fever for the Caribbean Premier League, pretty high now in TNT, um, Leighton, because in a matter of 32 minutes or so, there'll be CPL action at the Queen's Park Open. Yes, and TK are playing really, really well. And last, the, that nail-biting victory against the Jamaica Tala was, and of course, a massive win the match before that, Trinidad are on a roll. So yeah. obviously the crowd is going to come out to support what is a, a team stacked with talent, you know, yeah. when you, you, you name it, it's a who's who of West Indies cricket in that team. And of course, they're always exciting to watch because they always bring their A game under the leadership of Kieran Pollard. So, you know, yeah. well, that's not to watch. Yeah, let's see what happens. We'll wrap the sports match zone five minutes before the top of the hour because we've got to go over to, Kent, to Queen's Park over to get the toss and uh, get you ready for the first ball bowl in that Republic Bank uh, CPL match. We were scheduled to talk to the CPL CEO Pete Russell on the show today, but he has become unavailable in the last hour. So hopefully we'll talk to him sometime this week about the CPL and uh, the excitement that has been generated in the tournament so far as we head towards the closing stages of the group phase as teams try to position themselves for a playoff spot. We go to break. Back with more on The Zone after this.